vying for a spot on the USA Huge team. news. Huge news. She's back. It's the comeback. Mm-hmm. We're officially calling it Cat co- Cat's Comeback. Something along with... Yeah. We're, we're going to play around with the alliteration there. But um, This is Cat Osterman, Next Ride. The next ride. I like it. Ooh, that's a good Thank one. you. Look at, Thank you. Look at Chet. That'll be the next flow film. Hashtag <laughs> next ride. Um, no, it's huge news. Mm-hmm. Huge news. Were you surprised? I can't say I was like too surprised. I had some kind of like, I don't know. I just I felt after uh, the last Olympics, um, everyone on that team took it really hard, and Cat was very young uh, at that time, and. Hey, if it ain't broke, right? You know she's got the wheels still turning. So you, you, you think she still has the stuff? Oh yeah, I think she's totally got the stuff. If, if anything, she's stronger. She's smarter. Uh, she's, she, she's been coaching for she, quite some time. Exactly. Now. I think when you when you can teach it, you just Im- inevitably become much better at it. So I am stoked to see her at the tryout wheel and deal. And we've got an alumni game coming up uh, next month. Kat's going to strike Chez out. No, we're on the same team. Oh. So she's going to strike them out. (laughs) And I'm going to watch from second base. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But that clip was from, uh, you know, Chez mentioned the next ride, um, our film that we did on her several years ago when she was uh, in her last season retiring from the Pride. Um, It was called Last Ride because... That was what she was hashtagging herself on mm-hmm. her on her glove, and that was kind of it was her last ride. Um, man, I'm pumped to see the next ride. Oh, absolutely, Allie. Could you could you read uh, the post that Cat posted yesterday? Oh yeah, I got you. So Cat uh, went to Instagram and uh, she posted this great picture of her pitching in a USA softball T-shirt. Um, but she said, I'm back. My heart is racing with excitement as I post this. Last fall, I made the decision to put the cleats back on and give it a go one more time. Plain and simple, there's unfinished business. So that was really cool to hear. Damn. Um, I'm honored and excited to be trying out for the USA national team in January. Excited is an understatement when I think of the journey ahead. And, I mean, the people that were just commenting on this post, like, everyone is obviously very, very excited. I mean, whenever I heard the news, like, I mean, I kind of felt like it was coming. I feel like it was in her head, but at the same time, I was like, 10-year-old Allie was just, like, freaking out. Like, yeah. Do, so we, do we have a picture of 10-year-old Allie? Oh, yeah, with, like, Dora the Explorer haircut. Oh, yeah. You know, get uh, get that picture for next it, show. She got it going on. Fun fact, I actually auditioned for Spy Kids whenever I was 10, but that haircut did not get me past the first No, round. no. So. That's why you're <laughs> yeah. here. That's why with I'm us. here, right? Well, here's the deal. But mm-hmm. um, so many p- people took to Instagram, and we had, like, Natasha Watley commenting on here. Lauren Chamberlain, like Kelly Crutchman, everyone is just super pumped, and obviously I am too. It's a big deal. Mm-hmm. The goat's coming back. Like, oh, yeah. It's a big deal. Well, I think it's funny that uh, last spring, I get, yeah, last spring, we did the film with Team Japan, and one of the last questions I asked Yuri Yamada was, uh, what would you do against Cat, or uh, would you hit another home run off of Cat if she were to come back? And she said, "I think I'd strike out." Because <laughs> if you remember from the from the last Olympics, Yamada hit that towering home mm-hmm. run off of Cat. But can you just like just imagine right now, folks? Tokyo 2020, Cat Osterman, Monica Abbott, Kehlani Ricketts, Kelly Barnhill, Rachel Garcia. I mean, those are the pictures we're talking about. Like we're, my mind. like, <laughs> and that's just the pitching. Whoa. That's just the potential pitching staff. Paige Lowry's in there as well, mm-hmm. um, as one of the, as a pitcher who's going to be trying out in January. It, it's it's unbelievable the talent that's on this list. And for for Cat to kind of be headlining it, it was a special extra pe- special treat for all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, this Lauren week. Chamberlain's going to be at this tryout as well. The home run queen, uh, Megan Wiggins, uh, the ageless wonder the Kelly ageless Crutchman. Ageless wonder. Um, but we also saw um, there were some snubs. There were some snubs. Look, some it's surprises, not, if you will. Man, it makes me a little sad not to see any of the Romeros um, listed. 
um, as invitees. I think the big, uh, the biggest surprise for me was Paige Parker, um, with the with the career that she had uh, uh, at OU. At OU, alongside with Paige Lowry, the last season, um, she won two national championships. That ain't bad. Um, man, that was surprising. I know you're surprised about Jessica Warren. Yeah. Um, I'm really, think surprised. she's the best third third baseman in in the game. I think she's one of the best, hands down. I mean, I would put her up against any of those third basemen. That's just me. Um, and I think a lot of people would agree with me uh, that she is just a phenomenal player. That's clutch. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's just never been given a chance. Sure. But you know what I would be curious to see is who shows up at the open tryout. That's a good point. You know, could we see a Jesse Warren? Could we see the Romeros? Could the Romeros uh, be playing for Mexico? Legitimate question. Yeah, that is a legitimate um, question. They may just go straight to because they have dual citizenship, I believe. So they 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 could just play for Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, Who looked pretty good in the World Softball Championship? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we streamed that. They did look pretty good. They put up some put up quite a quite a few good games. Yeah, I was I was I was bummed not to see their names. Yeah, but you know we do a lot of lists and rankings and whatnot and it's really difficult so you're always gonna have you're always gonna have some snubs Mm -hmm. like it happens all the time like you're gonna have snubs yeah it just happens um just really unfortunate not to see those names because i mean they're beloved oh yeah yeah not not just talking about their talent but just the the you know the sierra is the face of she was the face of softball yeah. her, her career. So, so right now, uh, Ali Aguilar is at second base. Would you rather have Ali Aguilar or Sierra Romero? I, I'd rather have Romero. Ali? Romero. Romero. Yeah, right. So <laughs> we, we, should, we need to pull up the, the USA teams that we, we made a couple, like oh, a year or so yeah. ago. Okay. When everybody agreed, here's a, here's when everybody another, agreed with my team. Here's another um, one. So, so right now, okay. Let's not take away from the fact that this U, the last USA team that competed at the World Softball Championship, they flat out won it. They played phenomenally. Yep. It was a team effort. Um, they swung the bats well. They pitched extremely well. Um, this team, I mean, they could probably win a, a gold medal. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Just but, looking at the name, like, I mean, we went through the pitchers. You have Kat Osterman, Monica Abbott, Kaylani Ricketts, Danielle O'Toole's in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Paige Lowry, I mentioned. You have Carly Hoover, Delaney Gorley, um, Rachel Garcia, Kelly Barnhill. Should I keep going? Like, those are just the pitchers that we're talking about mm-hmm. that are on this list. Um, yeah, a phenomenal group of athletes um, right here who could, yeah, very easily win probably a gold medal. Very easily. I said it. Very easily win a gold medal. Um, it's tough. We're we're not we're not uh, on the field and understanding the chemistry between these players. Uh, that's another piece of it. But I don't know. You know, my heart goes out to the players that I, that didn't receive an invite. Brenna Moss had an amazing year in the NP, NPF um, offensively, she, and she's a phenomenal outfielder. Uh, Jolene Henderson probably had her best year in the NPF, Mm -hmm. pitching-wise. And say what you will, she's got one of the best change-ups in the game. Mm -hmm. It's nasty. Yeah, it's nasty. Um, It's interesting to me, we have um, the ageless wonder, Kelly Crutchman, is an 01 graduate. Mm -hmm. She's the oldest invitee. And then we have Jocelyn Allo who is class of 2021. Mm-hmm. So we have, we literally, you could be looking at an Olympic t- or a, a, a national team in 2019 that two players literally span two decades, which is mind blowing to me. It's, it's unbelievable um, that Kretschmann is still performing at that level. And then you go 20 years later and you have Jocelyn Allo, who is making her first tryout as a sophomore. Mm-hmm. Two decades, I did the math. It was quick, man. Because I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years. 20 years separate yeah. those two players. Um, it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Like old clashing with new. Like, you know, it's... Not old. I, I would say, I don't want to say old, refined. Refined. I mean, you know, like stuff. fine like, wine. Not like old, old like you, but... <laughs> oh. Ooh. 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 Kelly Crutchman is much old. No. Um, 
we're not going to go there. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really cool to see. It's cool to see that they're spanning these decades. It's, it, it, it was one of my favorite stat points that I pulled out of the list. I think it's awesome that uh, the players from the previous Olympics are still here. I mean, think about the wisdom that they can bestow upon uh, their teammates and what they're willing to share. They've been in that environment. They've played uh, in on the Olympic stage. They've been through that whole process, and it you can't, you know, make up for experience. Right. And between Osterman and Crutchman, Wiggins, Abbott, Wiggins, you know, I mean, those are. And the great part about Wiggins is that she's been playing in the Japanese league. She's faced nearly every single player on Team Japan who, for for most of us, that's probably going to be the team that stands between them and a gold medal. Yep. So. We have a we have a comment here. Somebody mentioned Shay Knighton. She's like, what's going yeah. on with Shay Knighton? Another, another legitimately phenomenal player mm-hmm. who I didn't mean, get an invite. Yeah. I mean... I agree with you, but I I don't know. My thought, okay, I'm going to just thinking outside the box here, is like why does a tryout have to just be the one weekend? Right. Like why can't it be broken up a little bit to uh, be able to evaluate more players? It's like I just – don't you think? it's It's tough to to vet out the talent when you don't have – a ton of time you know I, i'm just thinking back to the tryout it's like okay i had what five at bats yeah. five at bats to prove myself no it's <laughs> tough oh it's tough and, it and then you're awful. looking at 40 different athletes in two days and um no it's a really good point it's a really good point and i'm Chez makes really good points i'm like, just how saying how long would you like it to be mm, i would just like i would i would break up i would break them up right so, like, weekend one, group A goes, and then uh, weekend two, group B goes. There's an evaluation period. We take the best out of group A and group B, and we bring them back to one, and then we finalize I like that. the team. Like yeah. multiple cuts? hmm Yeah. It's like they do that in, like, football and, and baseball. I like where your head's at. It's just some thoughts. I like where your head's at. <laughs> um, I, I don't – man – Somebody asked, who would be your top picks? <sighs> top picks? I yeah, mean, from that list. Oh, my goodness. Um, that's, that's really hard. <laughs> I do think Man. they're the ones that they picked up in the second uh, – after the last tryouts. Um, I think they they did really well. Um, I thought Savannah Jakewish was a great pickup. Mm-hmm. She's somebody that I always thought would be a great asset to Team USA. She can play multiple positions. She yep. can fill your uh, DP role. Um, she's got a hose. Um, also, got it's not – I know, like, Aubrey Monroe has the starting position, but Taylor Edwards is no slouch. Oh, we know <laughs> we know, we know, know what Allie thinks of Taylor Edwards. Yeah. She's my best friend, so <laughs> <laughs> he's a stud. <laughs> um you know amanda lorenz is on this list uh mo mercado is on this list mm-hmm. mercado is um, really good bubba nichols bubba nichols is on the list you know we talked about you know baby goat little goat rachel garcia uh i don't know i, I can't pick you know you're talking about you know i mentioned decades it's two it's, these players span two decades at this point like you do top picks from the one decade and top pick from the second day. I mean, there are just so many good players on this right. list. Mm-hmm. Um, there'd be few and far between that I wouldn't be excited mm-hmm. about. Uh, I mean, Hannah Flippin had a great summer, too. That's mm-hmm. like another player that you don't want to sleep on. She's one of the best second basemen. She can swing the bat. I mean, the girl makes phenomenal plays, and she makes it look easy. And talking about play like, Sis Bates is on this list. Um so you, you got the you got the veteran studs and you got the young guns who are still it's exciting playing in college. It's yeah, it's 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 going to be a hard task to whittle that down. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a pretty amazing list. Yeah, we'll see in January. We'll see. <laughs> 
But in other news, so um, earlier in the year, we reported on um, the kind of drama unfolding. Actually, was that last last fall? I think it was almost a year ago. Yeah, almost it was almost a year, a year ago. ago. Exactly. Um, Louisiana uh, let go of Coach Michael Lotif and. Um, Kind of a lot of drama unfolded after that. Um, of players making allegations uh, to Lotif for mistreatment, and then a number of other players filing complaints uh, rega- regarding Title IX violations. Mm-hmm. And in recent news, um, DJ Sanders, who you remember was their big time slugger, uh, she went to play at the University of Oregon for a year, uh, made it to the World Series, and obviously she's going to compare her two experiences, both Mm -hmm. at the the University of Oregon and then Louisiana Lafayette. And from her experience, there were just huge disparity in how female athletes were treated versus the male athletes. Mm And this is coming up again as as uh, DJ and uh, a few other players are filing Title IX complaints. And Sarah, you can kind of talk to some of the infractions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the one the one that blows my mind is for six months they didn't have an athletic trainer, which I was a strength and conditioning coach um, for several D1 universities, and. Uh, it is it is a NCAA rule that an athletic trainer, whenever there's a whenever the players are gathered, whether it is a weight room session, they're on the field practicing, or they're at a game, it is a NCAA rule to have an athletic trainer, not a strength coach, an athletic trainer present, whenever the team is doing any kind of activity. Um, so the fact that they didn't have an athletic trainer for six months is a violation of NCAA rules. Like that's a big no no. Um, on top of that, there were certain types of fueling that weren't that were not provided to female athletes that were provided to male athletes um you know all of these big d1 schools have some kind of kitchen where any kind of like protein recovery drink and and snacks and there are certain there are rules about what type type of snacks can be provided in those fueling stations but um they would literally only give the female athletes a certain portion of those refueling resources and mm-hmm. the male athletes would get uh the whole run of the the fueling station which is mm-hmm. blatantly um against title nine like you can't, yeah this is you this, can't do that this is um, what DJ, dj sanders says she says i just feel there female athletes are equal or at least closer to being equal to male athletes when she's talking about uh, the uni- University of Oregon. And then she goes on to, to say, I was telling my teammates at Oregon, oh, can we have these things? Are they for us? They were like, yeah, they're for all student athletes. Right. So these, and uh, the same thing happened to, and I'm going to forgive me if I say her name wrong, Shay Schrecken, Schreckengost. Um, the same kind of similar, they, they, they've transferred out and they find themselves at new universities and they're, they were kind of surprised that all this was available to them as student athletes because they were told else otherwise while they were at Louisiana Lafayette. Um, You know, somebody, there was another story, like somebody said that they didn't have clean water, which is Mm -hmm. unbelievable. Uh, There were multiple complaints about their field not being um, kept. Yeah, it wasn't that. To to the point of um, being unsafe. Someone had um, needed some kind of surgery. I think it was a knee surgery, but I don't, I'm, not, I'm not remembering correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, knee surgery. Somebody needed a knee surgery. They didn't feel comfortable with the physician that the team provided, and they wanted a different physician, and they said, no, you have to pay for it out of pocket. Um, so these are all complaints, that, and the Daily Advertiser um, put out this story. I believe the discrimination, yep, the discrimination complaints... Um, against the university to the Office of the Civil Rights was uh, placed on September 12th. Um, and DJ Sanders and Shay Schreckengast um, were kind of the first two that this article mentions. Um, but it does talk about several other athletes and, um, 
and what they experienced. And on top of that, you know, these, these athletes kind of did the chain of command, right? They had these issues and they took them to Coach Lotif and Coach Lotif took them to the administration and we all know what the, how that resulted and he got fired. Uh, and I believe DJ Sanders is quoted in this, um, this article as saying like she felt very bad and perhaps guilty that like she was responsible for getting her coach fired because you know he they did what they were supposed to do they took it to the coach the coach did what he was supposed to do took it to the administration and then the administration failed to do what needed to be done you know but she talks about this you know this feeling of guilt and it's like no it's not your fault you did the right thing like um the administration didn't do the right thing how about these players taking it upon themselves they were not coerced. They've made it known in in the article mm. uh, quoted in the uh, Daily Advertiser that they're taking their own initiative to try to make things better. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I believe I believe Sanders specifically says like I, at, at the end is it Sanders at the end of the article she says she she discussed it with her mom and she was trying to. She's taking the the thought process of like if she were a mom, like she wants this to be better for the future athletes, the fe- female, the future female athletes at Louisiana Lafayette. I believe that's how they ended the the piece, um, with Sanders saying, "Yep, yeah, it was Sanders who said it." Um, yeah, it's this is completely voluntary. They weren't coerced. Like uh, they want to improve the culture and the atmosphere of Louisiana Lafayette, um, and quite frankly. They just want Title IX to be, like, carried out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Enforced. Yeah. They, you know, uh, it's it's mind-boggling that Title IX was so long yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean, still happy we, to deal just, with this. just like we were talking about yesterday, Wyoming, the state of Wyoming is fighting for high school girls softball. It is not a sanctioned sport. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that just wild? And hopefully the softball community can band together to help keep softball alive in Wyoming and kind of using our platforms to spread the word and to participate. You know, if we want to see softball uh, become better and to be held at a certain standard, well, we got to get off our butts. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Bobby has a has a has a note here. He says, simply look at the facilities at some D1 schools. Softball, softball facilities are terrible. Baseball facilities are top notch. Uh, maybe not a Title IX ob- violation, but not a good look nonetheless. And I think I think you know you look at something like Oregon, and they have a phenomenal um, facility. Texas A&M just has a brand new facility. Um, but by and large, yes, like. But that didn't come from like sitting and no, waiting. It, didn't. it came from those coaches actively, uh, <laughs> um, basically pursuing that route of like we need better facilities. We've got to be able to compete. We've got to bring fans to the stadium. There's a lot of, and, and I get it. It's a lot of money. You're talking about millions and yep. millions and millions of dollars. Uh, but in the long run we see the trajectory of softball and it keeps doing this, right? right? So it makes sense that you would prepare for that future, especially if uh, you're at a university with a program that's in the top 25 that's attracting tons of fans. Like with a Louisiana Lafayette, I mean, they've got crazy fans. They do. Yeah. Crazy fans. Yeah, if you if you are on the side, you know, with you know, Chess says the trajectory of softball keeps going up and up. If you are an administration that is not – helping that to happen at your school you're on the wrong side you're doing it wrong <laughs> you're doing it wrong um ull like chess said had phenomenal support they have great fans they've been a phenomenal program uh in the Sun Belt. and for the administration not to take seriously what lotif um was pushing you know you know you talk about oregon's facility you talk about AM's facility and the coaches who pushed for that and then the administration that actually mm-hmm. delivered on it florida's getting a new stadium um, like shame on you for firing a man who was just doing his job and looking after his, his his athletes, and like bully for the athletes who are who went to Coach Lotif and was like this isn't right, and and who are now kind of pushing back with this lawsuit. Mm-hmm. 
I was just waiting for you to drop the mic. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I can like rip it out of my <laughs> ear and mic drop. Um, I guess that's not as, I wasn't too salty there, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not, not a good look for Louisiana Lafayette. No. Um, to, the, to the softball community. So we um, got a different question. Yeah. Kelly Elvington, she's asking, can we talk about Florida's pitching staff? We Who can certainly talk about Florida's pitching staff, Kelly. We'll be the number We'll two. talk about it for you. Um, Natalie Lugo. That's what I think. That Natalie Lugo? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to I'm not going to fight that. That's who I think. I think that's a good that I think Chez is right. Uh, I just let just let everybody know I said that on air live. Mm -hmm. I think Chez is right. Um, they have, they've got two other freshmen. We'll see how they do. Uh, Elizabeth Hightower and Danny Farley. Um I think they're going to be I, I just think Lugo's got a year under her belt. Um, she's she's got experience throwing against some of the top teams in the SEC. Uh, she didn't throw a whole lot of innings, but um, I, I definitely can see her throwing some innings. She's When you look back on her club career, um, she's played on the top team. Um, I believe she was an OC bat buster, mm -hmm. um, along with a fellow teammate, Amanda Lorenz. So I kind of – I'm anticipating that uh, she can take the rings, but also, I'm sorry, uh, Katie Chronister too. That's another one. Um, I think those two will vie for the number two spot, in my opinion. So in the number two spot will either be Natalie Lugo or Katie Chronister. I think it's going to be a lot of Barnhill, though. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot of Barnhill. Mm hmm That rise ball, though. That rise ball. That though. rise ball. <laughs> oh, Debbie says hello. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> hello. Well, Thank you for joining us. You know, um, this weekend, we've got the PGF shootout. Best teams in – it's like a mini PGF. Yeah, it's a little bit. Championship, right? The yeah, big it's guys. like a quarter of it. That's like a quarter, yeah. More like yeah. a quarter. Mostly uh, SoCal teams, but you've got um, teams out of Illinois, uh, Illinois Chill, and um, the Beverly Bandits are traveling. Um, we've got Arizona Storm traveling to SoCal to compete. Uh, it's so going to be good, good very good club softball. My you dad really will be there. It. He's been there forever. Mel Seavers is going to yeah. be there. Mel. I'm excited to t I'm excited to see what the um each age group is looking like cuz there's been a a shake up every year after the summer on uh players going to different teams or moving up a level. Uh, this is kind of going to be our first look. Mhm. Mm our first glimpse, first look into the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um all right. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us guys. Um we'll catch you next week on Here's the Deal. All right. Thank you.